Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is my pleasure to conclude that session. And with a very common and very uh, a usual problem dealing with the uh, indeterminate renal masses. So uh, this is the content of uh, the talk. And uh, first will be uh, the uh, traditional increased use of abdominal ultrasound, CT, and MRI techniques that were really leading to the increased incidental detection of our small renal masses. In most cases, ultrasound and CT provide confident diagnosis, but we will see when MRI can play a key role. However, some of the renal masses remain indeterminate, and uh, these are the renal masses that cannot be categorized. The second is the cystic masses of classes uh, 3N and 2F. This is in the Bosniak scheme. And the last one is the solid tumors without intratumoral fat. So this situation, again, is a very common situation. The definition of a small renal mass is a mass that is um, below 3 cm in diameter, and we can also subclassify that class into the very small masses that are below 8 mm. So these indeterminate renal masses can, uh, are the masses that cannot be characterized as cystic or solid, or cannot be diagnosed as benign or malignant. So you see a very common situation. The first step in that characterization will be the separation between cystic and solid. And this is by differentiating the non-enhancing fluid-filled mass from the enhancing soft tissue. And this enhancing soft tissue, obviously, is profuse. And this is done by using contrast administration, whatever is the technique, contrast-enhanced CT, contrast-enhanced MRI, but also contrast-enhanced ultrasound. A threshold of 20 Hounsfield unit indicates definitive enhancement, and there is no enhancement or lack of enhancement when this change is below 10 Hounsfield units. However, you see immediately the gap between the 10 and 20 Hounsfield unit changes, and this is where other techniques will play a key role. The cystic renal masses are under the Bosnia classification system. However, you must identify the lesion that cannot be classified using this uh, Bosniak system. And these are the thickened wall uh, cystic renal masses with uh, originating from the urinary tract, the like the verticular or calluses, all resulting from infection or hemorrhage with the exception of the localized cystic disease. Step two also include the identification of the solid enhancing renal masses, and um, these are the pseudotumors that should be excluded. And these are typically the prominent Bertin colon, the dysmorphism, hypertrophic parenchyma adjacent to scar, or inflammatory renal masses, and this is typically uh, focal acute pilonephritis. The uh, uh, step that is just beyond is um, the differentiation between angiomyelipoma with the fat from tumors being at risk of renal cell carcinoma. Ultrasound uh, has been uh, uh, clearly uh, improving the diagnosis of the cyst, and uh, this is mainly with the uh, arrival of uh, tissue harmonic imaging and compounding techniques that really enhance this uh, anechogenicity from the lesion. This provides the definitive diagnosis in most of the simple cysts, and uh, renal masses that do not fit criteria are indeterminate and require additional imaging evaluation with the CT or in uh, many times now with the contrast-enhanced ultrasound. This technique that rely on the intravenous administration of an ultrasound contrast agent has a high sensitivity for demonstrating tissue vascularity, even when a CT contrast enhanced CT and MRI contrast enhanced MRI lack to demonstrate that enhancement. This technique, however, has an excellent negative predictive value that can help rule out malignancy, but has a risk of overclassification in the case of septated cysts. In fact, these bubbles can be detected at very low um, concentration, and um, uh, even uh, uh, normal septation with the tiny vessels can uh, exhibit enhancement. 
So again, just remember that a hypoechoic mass is not a cyst, and this is a very clear example of a lady that had follow-up during five years for that cyst, or so-called cyst, that is not a cyst. And um, uh, when she was referred to our department, the administration of our trust and contrast agents immediately uh, discovered the uh, presence of a renal cell carcinoma. Some of these renal cell carcinoma unusually can be strongly hypoechoic. Again, the use of contrast agent can be uh, uh, useful for uh, the detection of uh, vascularity, like in this uh, small uh, cystic renal cell carcinoma. But uh, uh, the newly introduced transducers with a higher frequency are really helpful for better delineation or depiction of that vascularity. And this is the conventional 1 to 6 megahertz transducer. In this case, the uh, uh, 3 to 10 uh, conventional um, convex transducer. And you see the improvement in that detection of uh, uh, the uh, delineation of the uh, vascularity inside that cyst. CT is, again, uh, playing a key role and remain the reference, the gold standard for assessment of uh, small renal masses. It uh, should be used with the uh, appropriate dedicated technique and has some limitation, and this is including the pseudo-enhancement can be uh, related to volume aberraging or artifacts and suboptimal contrast resolution. Uh, I don't want to come back to the uh, technique, but basically three or four phases are required for characterization of uh, renal masses using uh, uh, slice thickness between one and two millimeter, uh, sometimes with a higher resolution when it is necessary to identify some small uh, spots of uh, uh, fat inside that lesion. You see here the conventional uh, two uh, millimeter uh, acquisition and here at 0.6 you can detect these areas that were not seen uh, before on the uh, thick slices. MRI is really uh, playing a growing role with the, as an alternative imaging technique, solving problems that remain equivocal with the either uh, contrast enhanced ultrasound or contrast enhanced CT. It has advantage of uh, uh, our CT is the higher con con contrast resolution and sensitivity to contrast enhancement and the characterization of blood breakdown and necrosis. As you can see, in the case of iron uh, fluid uh, uh, lesion, there is an inversion of the signals in between the T1 and T2-weighted sequences, and the uh, uh, typical uh, uh, this uh, uh, pattern is very typical for uh, um, iron uh, uh, fluid level uh, cyst. And these are typically hemorrhagic cysts. In the typical situation or atypical situation, the cyst will appear as uh, hyperintense in the T1 weighted sequences and uh, due to the blood. And uh, here, after, uh, <coughs> sorry, after um, administration of contrast agents. Uh, contrast enhanced MRI rely on T2 weighted fat sat uh, sequences, diffusion weighted imaging, and the T1 weighted fat sat dynamic contrast enhancement. And typically, uh, we perform uh, four to five phases post contrast. Uh, however, this technique has some limitations, and the, in, particularly in patients that cannot. Uh, take a breath uh, hold or that cannot uh, remain, uh, um, no, uh, that, that, that cannot stay non moving inside the uh, MR system. So, how to deal with the uh, very small masses? The very small masses are the masses that are not categorizable because mainly volume aberraging. And this is a very typical situation uh, in, in a man with a previous uh, ablated uh, renal cancer on the left side. Uh, in the general population, these lesions would be considered to be uh, a microcyst, and typically no further imaging is required, and we just stop there. There's no uh, recommendation for follow-up. However, like in these men, in population at risk of uh, uh, renal cell carcinoma, like hereditary renal cell carcinoma syndrome, or history of synchronous uh, renal cell carcinoma, there's a, or a watchful waiting attitude or 
MRI can, that can be used in the selected cases, and particularly with a combination of the T2-weighted fat set sequences and diffusion-weighted imaging. And you see that uh, MRI with the, these T2-weighted sequences, because of the very high uh, contrast resolution of the T2-weighted sequences, very easily characterize that uh, very small mass as a microcyst. In this uh, situation of our multiple uh, lesions corresponding to papillary cancers, and this is uh, in a, a history uh, family of uh, uh, papillary uh, tumors, you see that the, t the diffusion weighted imaging in combination with the T2 weighted uh, uh, imaging increase the confidence in the differentiation between small cysts and uh, solid masses. And you see that these very small masses are all corresponding to um, small papillary cancers. And it is very interesting to see the role of diffusion weighting, particularly for papillary cancers. In case of small renal masses, now we are above 8 millimeter in diameter, um, the small masses that are not categorizable uh, because can, can be due to the equivocal attenuation characteristics. So this, as I told you, in between 10 and 20, there is an equivocal enhancement, and this post-contrast change is leading to misdiagnosis. The lesion can be also indeterminate uh, because of uh, um, pre-contrast Hounsfield unit between 15 and uh, 50 units. And these are the uh, bleeding lesions, and uh, this is at baseline, of course. And uh, sometimes you can have both uh, equivocal characteristics. The uh, differential diagnosis in this case can be a pseudo enhancement. This is uh, the beam hardening ar artifact. So you see some enhancement, but this is still not significant. Or it can be a history of um, or, or diagnosis of a typical hyperdense cyst. This is the bleeding one, but the attenuation values are below 50. Or it could be also a papillary renal cell carcinoma with poor vascularity. And this is a study that we perform in our department showing that uh, uh, almost 17% of uh, papillary cancer will exhibit enhancement below uh, uh, 15 uh, Hounsfield units. And even 6% uh, uh, of the papillary cancer will have no enhancement at all as defined previously with a change in Hounsfield units below 10. In these uh, small renal masses that cannot be categorizable, the equivocal enhancement is an issue. This uh, can be a combination of a cyst or a beam hardening artifact, and this is likely to be a cystic mass with a pseudo enhancement. When the lesion is inside the kidney, we know that we are in a situation where the lesion appears slightly hypodense before injection with uh, uh, still uh, uh, um, uh, Hounsfield units, uh, as you can see here, with a pseudo-significant enhancement, uh, but the lesion is really homogeneous. Uh, so when water attenuating values are found at baseline, and this is below 15 Hounsfield units, then this is probably the situation of a small cyst. In this case, of course, a targeted ultrasound that really focuses on this question, is this a cyst, can help. And in this situation, you see that it's pretty uh, obvious that this lesion is just a cyst. And in some uh, doubtful cases, you can also administer ultrasound contrast media. Sometimes, um, these indeterminate attenuation values in between 20 and 50, and with no significant enhancement, might correspond to a typical hyperdense cyst versus papillary renal cell carcinoma. In this case, again, ultrasound first with a combination of contrast enhanced ultrasound or MRI when ultrasound fails to demonstrate the presence of a typical cyst can be helpful. Let's see the situation of this lesion. You see baseline 20 Hounsfield units after injection on, during the uh, um, nephrographic phase, uh, 28 Hounsfield units. So this patient has also another lesion sitting at the mid part of the kidney with almost the same change in Hounsfield unit. You see here plus uh, uh, 5, and here it's plus uh, 7. 
In, in this case of a patient with a partial nephrectomy due to papillary renal cell carcinoma on the left kidney, of course, MRI is playing a key role by demonstrating slight enhancement in the lesion, while the uh, uh, mid part uh, lesion is really demonstrating the presence of a fluid, and this is uh, typical for a hemorrhagic cyst. Again, in case of uh, a doubtful lesion, Ultrasound contrastation can be really helpful by showing the lack of enhancement during, uh, 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 at the arrival of the microbubbles. <coughs> Sometimes even uh, um, MRI can fail in this situation, and you can see that this is a uh, edematous trauma in uh, that papillary cancer with uh, uh, no enhancement after injection, and you see that with contrast enhanced, the enhancement is weak but obvious and lead to the diagnosis of uh, a papillary uh, renal cell carcinoma. In the case of that equivocal enhancement, the question is always the same. Is this a hyperdense cyst with a pseudo-enhancement, or again, is this a renal cell carcinoma with internal hemorrhage? Let's see the situation in this patient where uh, baseline uh, Hounsfield units is a 68, and after injection, you see 85 Hounsfield units. In this case, however, MRI is not conclusive with a, a small heterogeneous pattern during the T2 sequence, and here, after injection, you can see some maybe uh, septation here. And uh, in this case, again, there was an inflammatory cyst you see that there's no enhancement at the level of the lesion, and we see pretty well the uh, septation with a small vessel running inside. Indeterminate cystic renal masses are also part of the uh, Bosnia classification, and we know that among the five categories, three are definitely uh, benign, uh, where well, three are definitely well classified, two are benign, so one and two, and the four is uh, the malignant one. So the indeterminate cystic renal masses are masses classified as 2F or 3. So we know pretty well that uh, these 2F correspond to benign lesion in uh, over 95% of the cases. Only 5% are malignant. And in this case, recommendation is imaging follow-up for five years to demonstrate the stability versus progression of that lesion. This category 2F has a multiple septation over a two or minimal wall thickening that are considered to be hairline with a some perceived enhancement but not definite enhancement and in some cases a thick irregular calcification despite the presence or the lack of any enhancement as you see in this case in this case you see the very tiny septation that are just perceived enhancement with hairline uh, pattern MRI can lead to upgrade complex cysts in almost 10% of this uh, category 2F, and in this case, this lesion will be classified uh, as a 3, as demonstrated by this paper from Israel Group. In this case, increased thickness of septa or wall uh, are detected, and uh, uh, in uh, that series, uh, when one case of malignant word was detected and demonstrated by the use of uh, MRI. In this case, of course, that technique increased the rate of uh, malignancy. So, in the case of indeterminated CT category 2F, the recommendation will be to use MRI first. In, if MRI confirmed the presence of a 2F or 3 lesion, then, uh, uh, or, uh, sorry, if CT confirmed 2F and MRI over classify the lesion as 3, then the recommendation is to go to surgery. If MRI confirmed that the lesion remains as a 2F classification, then recommendation is just follow up. Let's see uh, this case with a, 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 a lesion that is sitting at the lower pole of the left kidney, and you see that small calcification. You see the uh, very tiny enhancement with some perception um, of enhancement in the, in the uh, septation, but no clear enhancement. 
you see that uh, MRI really overclassified that lesion as a three with a definite enhancement that is obviously uh, perceived with almost a pseudo uh, um, nodular uh, pattern here. And that was a renal, cystic renal cell carcinoma. Indeterminate category three correspond to malignancy in 50 to 60 percent of the cases and require uh, uh, surgery in most cases. Uh, these are uh, grossly thickened walls uh, with an equivocal uh, enhancement. That wall thickening is typically uniform and smooth or slightly irregular with, the, again, this unequiv unequivocal enhancement. In some cases, like in this one, you see the multiloculated lesion with a numerous grossly uh, patterned and um, thickened septation and walls as here with this unequivocal enhancement. Again, in that category three, with equivocal wall enhancement, contrast MRI can be solving the uh, problem and uh, improve that diagnosis. Let's see this uh, uh, situation with this uh, small lesion with clearly some unequivocal enhancement, and again, unequivocal enhancement is definitely a category three lesion. In this case, of course, uh, MRI is showing the same kind of uh, pattern that confirmed the presence of a category three lesion, and that lesion was that patient was referred to surgery, and the surgery uh, uh, revealed the presence of an inflammatory cyst with no uh, cancer components. At the end, the solitary, solid renal neoplasm uh, uh, should be uh, identified and detection of uh, uh, intratumoral fat is mandatory in this case and in the presence or in the absence of calcification, the diagnosis of benign angiomyelipoma will be done. Among the non-fat containing small indeterminate neoplasm, most are renal cell carcinomas, however, 24 and 25% are benign, and these are mainly oncocytomas and angiomyelipoma with minimal fat that are not, cannot be distinguished from a, a small renal cell carcinoma. Percutaneous biopsy of indeterminate solid renal masses can be, uh, is the only way, I would say, to make a, a confident diagnosis of the mass. And... Uh, then you will be able to identify the non-fat containing benign lesions from malignant renal masses or to identify renal cell carcinoma from metastasis or lymphoma. In this case, you see that these multiple lesions. The rate of failure is below 10%, and this is including the uh, non-conclusive uh, uh, biopsies, and accuracy is excellent right now with a differentiation between benign and malignant lesions in more than 90% of the cases. However, there are some limitations for uh, grading the lesion uh, with a Furman score, and we know that this is not a non-perfect situation. Serious adverse events will appear in less than 1%. <coughs> So when definite diagnosis of malignancy is needed before treatment, decision and planning, biopsy is required, and especially in high-risk surgical candidates, patients with a limited functional renal reserve, centrally located uh, tumors like this one, for example, at high risk of nephrectomy, and before percutaneous ablative uh, therapy. And this is critical. We do not ablate a patient without having a definite diagnosis. So this is really helping for, to uh, discuss active surveillance in uh, selected cases. So in conclusion, how to deal with these indeterminate renal masses? CT is clearly the gold standard, and there's a growing role of contrast enhanced ultrasound and MRI. Masses that remain indeterminate at CT, like the uh, very small lesion, will require MRI in selected uh, cases, and small undeterminate masses with equivocal attenuation values will go for, first for a contrast-enhanced ultrasound because of its sensitivity to detect perfusion or MRI. Misclassified cystic renal masses can be uh, uh, reclassified with MRI 
in selected cases, in selected cases but category 2F uh, uh, will also uh, benefit from a, a complete CT evaluation. In determinate non-fat containing tumors, again, will uh, uh, be a biopsy in selected cases to help uh, the decision and uh, treatment. And for the last minute, I would like to show you this case that was uh, a case from uh, uh, last month with a man, a 52-year-old man with a history of renal cysts, and you see, and that suffered from acute back pain, and he had the contrast-enhanced CT and MRI. So clearly, you see that the baseline uh, house feed units is 31 at the level of the central of this lesion and 47 on the side. So we agree that this is an undetermined mass because of uh, Hounsfield units below 50. After injection, you see no significant change because during the arterial phase, the Hounsfield unit is 39 in the center of the lesion and 44 on the side. So there's no enhancement as defined with our criteria. And at the end, during the nephrographic phase, you see 44 uh, uh, Hounsfield units, so plus 13, and then we are at the age, and uh, 49 on the hyper-dense uh, initially uh, lesion, so plus 2, so non-significant. In this case, MRI is showing a heterogeneous hemorrhagic lesion with no specificity, no a clear sign of renal cell carcinoma, and you see the pre-contrast and post-contrast T1-weighted fat sat acquisition. At ultrasound, you see that the lesion is really sitting against the cyst. Color Doppler is not providing any information. So in that case, just use contrast-enhanced ultrasound. With contrast-enhanced ultrasound, you see the cystic lesion, the cyst is here, and you see very clear enhancement at the level of uh, that hemorrhagic mass. And let's see just the acquisition that is performed at the end, and you see this very strong enhancement of the lesion. So thank you very much for your attention.